I'm Kim the Abundant Traveler and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos inspiring you to live your best life through travel. If you're looking for guides, hacks, inspiration, and ideas, this is a place to be. Today, it's all about the fear of flying. There are so many people that are afraid to fly. In fact, 25 million people in the United States have a fear of flying. It's called aerophobia. So let's go ahead and get started on how to overcome your fear of flying. While you're watching this video, make sure to subscribe, that's the red button below, and ring that notification bell because you don't wanna miss an episode. First and foremost with the fear of flying, understand what makes you afraid. Are you afraid of heights? Don't wanna look out the window. Are you afraid of claustrophobia? You have claustrophobia where you don't wanna be in an enclosed area. Are you afraid of losing control because the pilot's in charge and so are the flight attendants and not you? It's really important to understand what actually makes you afraid rather than a big, broad, general aerophobia. The more you know, the better off you're gonna be. Once you figure out what your fear is actually about, there are a few tips you can do before you get to the airport. Number one, download the app for the airline. Knowledge is power. Get their notifications also from their app. That way you're going to be informed of flight changes, time changes, delays, etc. Also, when you download the flight information, you can check the flight route. So find out exactly where you're going. Find out where you're going to be flying over, what cities you're gonna be flying over, and what the route is you're going to take. That's extremely important to have the knowledge of where you are headed. The entire route it makes things easier on your mind. Also, before your actual flight, make sure to think about which seat is best for you. If you're afraid of the turbulence and losing control, perhaps you wanna sit in the front of the plane because the front of the plane doesn't shake quite as much as the back. Also, if you get hot and nauseous and that just adds to your fear and your anxiety, then I recommend sitting next to the window. The windows tend to be a little bit cooler than on the aisle. Well, if you're afraid of heights, you don't wanna be looking out the window, then I recommend that you take the aisle seat. The aisle seat, you're gonna have a little bit more room, a little bit more breathing space. You might get bumped by the flight attendants or other passengers going by, but at least you psychologically have a little bit more space if claustrophobia is your problem or you have the fear of flying. So picking the right seat is extremely important. Okay, I don't have a fear of flying, and after 65 countries and tens of thousands of miles, you would think that I would not be anxious about this, but I am always anxious of missing my flight. Hence, this next tip is for me as well. That is, get to the airport about two hours in advance for a domestic flight, two and a half-ish to three hours in advance for a international flight. What that allows you is plenty of time to check in if there's a line. There's plenty of time to get through security, even if you have TSA pre-check, because sometimes that's a really long line as well. It allows you to find your gate, as well as grab a snack, grab some food, grab some uh, water as well as doing maybe a little bit of shopping at the airport. I love it. I get there two hours in advance. I get all my work done. I get caught up and I relax before I get on that airplane and I never miss my flight. Speaking of grabbing a snack while you're at the airport, my recommendation is to stay away from caffeine. Do not be drinking a lot of coffee. It's already gonna make you anxious and jittery anyway. If you're already worried about flying and you have a fear of flying, then don't drink things like caffeine. Drink a chamomile tea or an herbal tea. Also with the food that you eat. You eat lots of carbs or drink drinks with lots of bubbles that's going to make your tummy a little bit upset when you're up in the air at altitude. So keep your meals light, clean salads, clean proteins, and not lots of bubbly Coke drinks and also not lots of fat and gross and candy because that'll make you sick which is going to be horrible on top of your fear. Now that you have your snacks, your clean food, as well as your herbal tea, no caffeine, probably no alcohol, and you're at the airport with plenty of time, you can go find your gate, sit down, relax, and read a book. Another thing that I suggest instead of reading a book is going and watching the planes take off and land. It's incredible to think at any airport in the world how many planes take off and land every minute. If you look at them and you're watching them go up and down and up and down, you can think, look, if they can do it, so can I. 
Now that you're thinking logically and your fear is starting to subside, let's think of an interesting statistic. You have a one in 107 chance of dying in a car crash, which is a crazy stat. Whereas there's not enough data, in other words, not enough people die in a plane crash to even have an actual statistic. Hence, flying in a plane is a lot safer than driving in a car, which we do every single day. I believe that everybody has a little bit of angst about flying and a little fear of the unknown, which is the destination where you're headed. So if you're perhaps traveling overseas for the first time, you're traveling a long haul flight for the first time, you're traveling solo for the first time, then I would book a call with me. You can book a consult call. I promise I will make your trip easier, more fun, less expensive. I'll give you ideas, tips, and inspiration that will just make your trip 10 times better. It is well worth it. So go to the description below and book a consult with me. So now let's talk about a few things to bring with you on the plane that will help you with your fear of flying. Number one, bring a friend or family member. It is so much easier when you're traveling with somebody. One, it's physically easier. Two, you have somebody to talk to if you start to freak out and somebody to distract you instead of you focusing on your fear. Number two, wear the comfiest clothes that you have. The kind of clothes that you would wear not necessarily your pajamas, but something that you would lounge around on your couch, watch some Netflix, maybe watch Yellowstone. Those types of clothes against your skin will remind your body that it's time to relax and be low key. Super, super helpful to wear super comfy clothes. Also, bring distractions with you. Download Netflix videos. Um, bring a video game. If you like video games, bring your favorite crossword puzzle. Bring anything with you, a book, your favorite Kindle book, whatever with you that will help you distract yourself and keep your mind busy and focused. You don't want something that is so light to distract you that you're actually not distracted. You need something that you can concentrate on. Speaking of books, you can also get the book called Soar. I've left a link in the description below for this book. It is a great book to help you understand what is going on in a plane, what causes your fear of flying, and how to overcome it. It's a fantastic book. Another distraction that I like when I'm traveling is downloading or printing off a bunch of information about my destination. I do a lot of research at the last minute. So it's a lot of fun to think about your vacation, where you're going and what you wanna do by reading up on the destination. Really, really great thing to do to distract you. It also keeps your mind excited about what's in the future in your destination. Traveling as much as I do, I have a honed in curated list of everything I carry in my carry-on. And if you're interested in that list, it's got everything I promise. Then go to the description below and download my free guide. So in addition to the fear of flying, a lot of people get motion sickness. And if you're one of those, there's nothing worse than combining the anxiety of flying along with being nauseous. So I suggest that you get some bonine, which is a non-drowsy Dramamine. I've left an Amazon link in the description below in case you're interested. Bonine is your friend for flying, for catamarans, for being on a boat, anywhere that you might get motion sickness. I keep it with me in my carry-on just in case. Now that you have all your goodies and distractions, let's talk about physically being on the plane. First and foremost, tell the flight attendants that you're scared. They are trained in helping people overcome fear. Also, if you let them know and you start to panic, they will know what's going on with you. Extremely important. Plus, they tend to take extra care of you if you told them you're a little bit scared. If I get there early enough, in addition to the flight attendants, I recommend that you ask to meet the captain and co-captain. There is nothing cooler than going into the cockpit and checking out what's going on up there. Also, once you meet the captain, you will realize that it is a human taking care of you and safety is first. You may think that the flight attendants and the captain are there for your ease and comfort, but their number one priority is your safety. So once you meet the crew, I promise you'll feel a whole lot better. Now that you've met your crew and you're safely in your seat, you've listened to the safety instructions about the seatbelt and in case of emergency, then I suggest that you read the safety instructions and the information about your particular airplane in the pamphlet in the seat in front of you. Again, knowledge is power. 
In addition to a book like SOAR, a good thing to try is maybe one of the airline fear of flying courses. You can look at EasyJet, Lufthansa, KLM. Several of the airlines have these incredible programs to help you overcome your fear. When you're picking your seats and your flight and you're going to be brave by getting on the airplane, it's a good idea to pick a flight that is relatively short. Keep it under two hours. Actually, you can keep it under one hour. If I was afraid of flying, I might fly from Austin to Dallas, and that was it. I would feel like I had accomplished something and I had made it up and down safely. So make sure to keep your flights in the beginning very, very short. Then you can extend them a little bit, a little bit, a little bit longer before you head to a long haul flight to perhaps Australia or South Africa. Now that you have taken off, something that everyone is a little nervous about is turbulence. Well, this is an easy way to think about turbulence. It's like driving down a bumpy road or driving down a dirt road. A plane is built to withstand the turbulence. It is just wind coming at you from a different direction. If you see the wings flopping a little bit, they're your shock absorbers like on your car. The plane is designed to absorb lots and lots of turbulence. Just know that your flight attendants and your pilots are trained in how to handle turbulence. So you should be okay. Let go, lose the need for control and just enjoy the ride. The turbulence won't last but just a minute. It's very possible before your flight or during your flight, you are still going to get anxious even though you've done everything to prepare. So there are a couple of things you can do that I like if I get stressed out or anxious. One is deep breathing. Take deep belly breaths. Take five seconds in, hold for five seconds, and five seconds out. You can also, and by the way, I'm not a yogi. I don't pretend to play one on YouTube. I just know that these things work. You can use the Hall of Impression Point, which is right here, kind of at your third eye. If you tap with your finger or you run your finger in a circle, it will help calm you as well. There's also this point here that you take the meaty part of your hand here and here, just like this, and you press. That will instantly calm you down as well. It's amazing when you just do this, your whole body goes as well. Did you know that your body basically feels the same when it's anxious and excited? So if you start to get anxious and these pressure points don't work, talking to yourself doesn't work, all of the practice and information you have learned in advance doesn't work, then think about your destination. Think about how much fun you're gonna have in your destination and it will shift your body out of anxiety into excitement. Still, it's an upper, but it just doesn't feel the same, doesn't feel as stressful. So just think about where you're headed. So as you are flying, if you have two or three minutes of calm, you've made it two or three minutes without freaking out, pat yourself on the back and tell yourself you've done a great job. Tell the person you're traveling with, hey, I've been calm for two or three minutes. Just enjoy the fact that you have accomplished something. All you have to do is build on that. One minute of good, maybe have five minutes of bad, and then two minutes of good. We like to be rewarded as humans, so go ahead and reward yourself for a job well done when you have a moment of peace. Now that you've made it through your flight, you've landed safely and you're back on the ground. Again, pat yourself on the back and start saying, in the past, I was afraid of flying. If you say it in the present, I'm afraid of flying, you're gonna continue to be afraid of flying. So start telling your friends and family, in the past I was afraid of flying, but I just did a 30 minute flight and I made it through. So in the past, I was afraid of flying. I just think that's a great way to look at life. You can use that in the past for all of our bad habits everywhere in our life. The last thing that I recommend, and it's a last resort, is medication. If you need to and you cannot make it without medication, go to your doctor, get a prescription, and take what you need to take. Just beware that uh, flight attendants and airline employees will be watching out for people that are not coherent. So don't over-medicate. That's a bad thing. That's just bad all the way around. So just terrible. So make sure to check out my other videos on flying, including first time flying, what I carry in my carry-on, what I do for long haul flights as well. And thank you for watching these tips on overcoming your fear of flying. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you on the next adventure, hopefully in first class. Take care y'all, bye.